Generic greetings and welcome to Science Insanity, a channel dedicated to bringing my probably problematic love of science fiction to you, the viewer. Today, we are covering one of my favorite mech designs ever, the gateway drug to my undying love of the pinching king crab, my obsession with reverse leg joints, and the spinny arm boy itself one of the most widely used and respected battle mechs of all time. It defined an era and even impressed the clans to the point they not only copied its design, but recovered destroyed mechs to rebuild and give to their rear line elements. I'm talking, of course, about the Marauder, a certified classic of battle tech with the funny arms. Normally, I would introduce my co-host for the episode today, but unfortunately he's escaped my basement prison and has been on the run for a few days. So, good ol' Sai is alone today and perhaps the next week and beyond as well. This also means that the stream on the 19th will not be happening, instead it is being moved to the 24th, the release day of Armored Core 6, and we are going to be streaming it live day one. But hey, if you see Steve in the wild, trank him for me, you'll get a cookie or something. Before we dive into the video as well, if you'd like to support Sai directly, check out our Patreon linked below, and if space bucks are short, sub, like, comment, share, all that, since every little bit helps and appreciate it. And if you want to hang out with other turbo nerds, and occasionally me, Sai has a Discord! You're more than welcome, fellow geeks. Our community is ever-growing. And with that out of the way, the Marauder! By the way, if you aren't down to listen to me shamelessly worship this mech, then I guess go watch a YouTuber with more self-respect. Built by General Motors, the creator of some of the worst and best cars of all time, as well as the first commercially available fusion engine, in 2612, the Marauder became the newest addition to their long list of illustrious game-changing products. When the Marauder was first designed, it was intended for the chassis to serve as a direct heavy fire support platform, but where others of the time focused on long-range missile support or limited ammunition ballistics, the Marauder decided that the future is now, old man, and thusly was intended to use particle cannons and a supplemental autocannon to put down witheringly powerful and terrifyingly accurate fire at long range. However, despite the reasonable outlook for its intended purpose, the person or design team responsible for making this thing slap on their Einstein wigs, grabbed a couple Tesla coils, and laughed maniacally long into the monochrome night. The next morning, out came the Marauder, arguably one of the most powerful and successful mechs to have ever existed. The success of the Marauder was also almost an accident at first. You see, while it was intentionally designed to be the bleeding edge of mech technology, what with its incredibly advanced electronic systems, targeting sensors, and monstrously heavy armaments for a mech of its tonnage, it wasn't intended to be a frontline brawling or, you know, assault mech, not anywhere close. But as it turns out, if you're capable of evicting your opponent's soul from their body while over a kilometer away, then doing the same to all of his friends, there really isn't much stopping you from just walking through whatever's left of the front line and assaulting enemy rear line positions. For these reasons, almost immediately after it entered service, it became widely loved and highly sought after. The Great Houses even started major bidding wars over production rights in their place in line for produced models until they managed to get production up and running domestically. The incredible desire and the remarkable amount of people that wanted to get their hands on the Marauder was because of a few reasons. Chief amongst them, however, was that the Marauder combined a number of technologies and elements that were around for a while but never fully integrated into one mech by this point. While the Marauder was a heavy mech at the higher end of the class's weight bracket, it carried a disgustingly powerful array of weapons that often rivaled that of assault mechs while maintaining good speed, handling, heavy armor, and most importantly, the ability to effectively use its weapons to their fullest. The Marauder may not have directly outmatched most of the other top dog mechs during the era, but as a total package, its flexibility, power, and rugged durability meant that it was often more effective on the field than aforementioned top dogs while having less exploitable weaknesses. We will get to what some of those weaknesses are later on in the video, but for the most part, it didn't really have many as long as it was occupying its intended battlefield role of sitting just behind the front line and putting holes in things and people where they really shouldn't be. The design of the mech also had a few unique benefits. Unlike many of the humanoid mechs it would compete with, such as the Warhammer, which is 
just an oh-so-attractive brick shithouse of a mech, the Marauder's highly angular design meant that it was much more effective at shrugging off incoming autocannon fire, as well as making it more effective at torso-twisting and causing energy weapons or missile salvos to spread across its armored body, rather than pinpointing and dumping all of their damage directly into one component. The Marauder also carried a new armor profile compared to many of its contemporaries. The advanced lamellar armor it carried was more efficient at absorbing or deflecting the energy of incoming fire. Altogether, with its silhouette, this meant that the Marauder was often unreasonably survivable while only carrying a ton more armor than the Warhammer did. By the way, I'm really not bullshitting you here. In the tabletop and the various games, the Marauder's angled armor gives it extra survivability. If I recall correctly, the tabletop gives everyone a straight-up penalty to their chance to hit when they're shooting at the Marauder, and in the most overpowered incarnation that I can think of, the recent Battletech slash MechWarrior games, it's just like a straight 10% chance to not take damage. So if you shoot it 10 times, one of your bullets retires early and just disappears somewhere off to the Caribbean, never to be seen again. And theoretically, using these incredibly broken rules, if you were to, say, drop the sun on it, there's a 10% chance that the Marauder can just cha-cha slide right out of the way of that damage. I want to believe so badly that that's how it would work, but I really don't think it actually works like that. I'm about... 95% certain that those kinds of big AoE weapons ignore that rule, but in my heart, I truly believe that the Marauder can parry the sun. Moving on though, during the years of the Star League, the Marauder became one of the favorites for the Gunslinger program. For those who don't know, the Star League caused a rather sizable reduction in the standing militaries of the Great Houses. The Draconis Combine specifically did not like this. All of the Great Houses realistically didn't particularly like this, but the Draconis Combine suffered a little bit worse than all of the others, and uh, inflicted much of that suffering on the Star League. You see, many of its disbanded mech warriors did not take this laying down, and instead, they up and took their mechs with them. Don't ask how, they probably just walked off with them. These mech warriors became known as Ronin, and they needed to be put down immediately. Since, in classic samurai-esque fashion, they were constantly picking fights, turning to piracy, and generally being a pain in the ferrofibrous ass. Normally, some up-jumped mech warrior wouldn't be too big of a deal, you just kill them and be done with it, but the problem was, a lot of these ronin were some of the best pilots that the Draconis Combine had, and they were winning quite handedly against their Star League opposition. And so, in order to stop them from constantly losing more and more honor, which eh, doesn't really matter, but more importantly, more and more mechs and materiel, they needed a way to stop them. And thus, the Gunslinger program was born to train mech warriors in the fine art of butchering their fellow man with the most style and greatest amount of heavy firepower possible. The Marauder was immensely popular in these endeavors, since often their pilots could outrange, outdamage, and outmaneuver their opponents, quite literally ripping them apart due to the point that only larger assault mechs were realistically a threat to them. The Marauder proved to be so incredibly effective in the Gunslinger program that it also accidentally created a massive market for mercenaries and pirates and literally everyone else to get their hands on it. If one well-trained ace mech warrior could do that amount of damage or be that effective in it, then some random schmuck getting their hands on it could still do a hell of a lot of damage. However, aside from individual units or individual mech warriors, the Marauder also found incredible success and remarkable amounts of popularity in larger units, especially for commanders and battlefield organizational staff, as an advanced electronic suite and communication system allowed it to keep a constant and highly detailed view of the battlefield. No matter how ratty an opponent might be, it was impossible to hide from this thing. Not to mention whenever some social general or Capellan commander saw his brilliant strategy once again fail miserably, they could call for help and bravely run away very efficiently. But for the most part, the firepower advantage that the Marauder could bring while staying at a safe distance and assisting in the coordination of a unit 
meant that it was very effective as a command mech and began rapidly taking on that role for any units that could actually get their hands on it. The widespread success and general effectiveness of the Marauder chassis meant that it very rapidly propagated across the inner sphere. Every single great house set up entire factories devoted pretty much entirely just to building this thing, if not multiple of them, and marauders began to bulk out the forces of not only the Star League, but the Great Houses, and some mercenary companies to rather heavy levels. This incredibly widespread dispersal of the Marauder also meant that it tended to be customized or rebuilt a frankly ridiculous number of times. Basically every faction, every minor region of the Inner Sphere, every single mercenary company, every single division in the armed forces basically took the Marauder, changed around what weapons it carried, and slapped on a new coat of paint or a new designation and said there we go, new mech. It was customized to hell and back to basically fit whatever you could possibly need it to do. To an almost comical degree, I would even argue the Marauder may be one of the most variant chassis in the entirety of Battletech, suffering from success, I guess you could say. And speaking of suffering from success, the good times could not last. When they inevitably came to an end because Fat Genghis Khan tried to conquer the entirety of the universe, the Great Houses made prodigious use of them on the field following the Succession Wars. Their flexibility and crushing power turned out to be monstrously effective, enough so that early on, while the Great Houses actually had them in large numbers, they were organized into humongous units and slammed into the teeth of enemy defenses. As it turns out, the teeth of the enemy's defenses uh, smashed apart very easily under the weight of a few hundred of these mechs. Granted, these formations suffered heavy losses due to the threat they posed, drawing the attention of air assets, other assault or heavy mech divisions, heavy artillery, the sun, repeatedly and often, but their effectiveness helped shape the early decades of the Succession Wars, so much so that like many production facilities for other extremely effective mechs of the era, they became a prime target for destruction. Every time a factory that produced them could be struck, it was destroyed. Every time the Great Houses found a way to actually disrupt the supply chain for them, they did. If it was possible to glass an entire world that was responsible for producing these things, it happened. By the time of the 3025 era, that is the most common for Battletech matches, games, settings, whatever, the Marauder was a far more rare mech. It was still incredibly common to find across the Inner Sphere, and it would be extremely rare to not see heavy divisions running around with at least one of them in there just because of how efficient and effective they were, but the number of them that were actually available had dropped drastically. No longer do you see them running around in hundred-man strong divisions of nothing but marauders, and you also start to see them be made with more patchwork components, dumbing down their weapon systems, making them even simpler, and slicing out some of their advanced electronics because the Inner Sphere had obliterated their ability to actually produce that stuff. That didn't mean that it was ineffective or useless, however, by the time of the clan invasion, the Marauder was still a powerful vehicle that didn't ask or demand your respect, it came to you and kicked the respect out of your corpse. But there is a spot of light, there is hope at the end of this tunnel. With the discovery of the Helm Memory Core and the gradual return of Star League era technology to the Inner Sphere, the Marauder was one of the first mechs to be chosen for upgrades and new models, both because it had originally been designed with lost tech from the Star League era, and because it was already a fantastic mech platform, so making it even better would give it plot armor. The Bounty Hunter says hello. During the clan invasion and even beyond, this venerable mech would serve on the front lines. The Lost Tech refit allowing the, by this point, ancient chassis to compete and win against the clans. Though superior clan weaponry would still pound the Marauder to pieces at long range, should the distance close, the fight was often far more even and a good pilot could pull heroic victories over the clan head menace of the 3050s. Also, I couldn't figure out anywhere else to put this, so here we go, I guess. Arms! The Marauder has them! 
It also has super extending actuators, so it can rotate its arms behind it to shoot the bad men trying to sneak up or get the co-pilot to snipe people as the mech is running away. Generally, this is more rare, it's not that funny, but you know, a lot of mechs can do it, the riflemen can do it, so it's not particularly special. But um, there is one thing that, you know, it, it, the Marauder doesn't have, and, and that, that would be hands. Not, not so much as a single finger on this guy, you might notice. However, despite the lack of hands, the wiki describes the Marauder as being able to batter its opponents to scrap with the strength of its physical strikes, which is strange. You see, normally melee mechs tend to have hands, and if they don't have that kind of stuff, they tend not to be able really to do melee efficiently, because you don't really want to slap someone with a gun barrel. It's not going to work out well. And if you don't understand why that's a terrible idea, I highly recommend you study why tanks don't joust with their cannons. That sounded like an innuendo, but that's, that's staying in the final cut. So for those unaware, the Marauder simply pulls a Bart Simpson. He is gonna rotate his arms, and if you get hit, it's your fault. God, look at this. What a buffoon. What an absolute ignoramus. What a fool. There's just something about seeing the Marauder windmill its arms around as its only ability to actually engage in melee, and that's just the funniest thing in the universe to me. And with a brief history out of the way at solid 20 minutes and some funny stuff at the end there, let's talk about the Marauder's stats and components. Unlike a lot of other mechs I've talked about, I'm not going to go over a bunch of different models because... Uh, Let's be frank, there are so many Marauder variants, I'm about 90% sure that Grandma has one outfitted with a battle bakery and hand-knitted heat sinks somewhere lying around, so it's just not worth your time or my effort to go over every single one of them. Instead, I'm going to talk about the general weapon loadouts along with some notable factors about the mech alongside the specifically default loadout. Firstly, the Marauder stands 12 meters high, which while a big boy, the most surprising part is that it actually has a cannon set height that you can compare other stuff to. Considering it's a coin flip, whether a mech actually does, and even more surprising considering the, modder, the Marauder has had like a billion different visual versions, of which I will address that at the end. Moving on though, the Marauder is a 75 ton heavy mech, pushing the edge of the assault mech weight bracket. Its bulk allows it to carry a genuinely withering amount of long-range firepower in the form of two Hellstar particle cannons and a single Whirlwind autocannon. One of the energy weapons were mounted in each arm while the autocannon occupied the side torso of the mech. These weapons allowed the Marauder to put down a significantly higher damage profile than even an AC-20 at a massively increased range with significantly higher chance of hitting. For those that don't know, an AC-20 is basically a naval cannon donking a shell into your chest. That's... that's an AC-20, and these things outperform that. Supporting this was two medium lasers, one mounted in each arm below the main particle cannon. Should an enemy close in and render the PPCs ineffective, the Marauder could fall back on these lasers in conjunction with the autocannon to defend itself with reasonable effectiveness, although it wasn't quite as good compared to long range, where it could use the standoff distance for its weapons to simply outperform whatever the enemy might have had. When it comes to the weapons, however, there are countless variations on this energy and kinetic hybrid loadout. It's extremely common to see marauders remove the particle cannons for large lasers or multiple extra medium lasers, the free tonnage then being used to replace the autocannon with some ridiculously over-the-top weapon like a gauss rifle capable of coring smaller enemy mechs in a single well-placed shot from kilometers away. Should one decide to make use of the Marauder's durability and slim profile in close-range engagements, it's common to see the weapons replaced with pulse lasers and a large bore LBX in place of a more conventional gun. And if you are uninitiated in the world of Battletech and you're wondering what an LBX is, imagine the aforementioned naval gun. But now, imagine it firing like a shotgun. A hunter uses bird shot pellets for hunting birds. An LBX uses mech shot for hunting mechs and I guess Clanner Elementals. Powering all of this and making sure the Marauder can continue to cruise along, on the default chassis there is a 300 rating Velar fusion engine and power plant. A 300 rating engine is a pretty hefty boy and allows the Marauder to reach a respectable 65 kph. 
While this isn't fast enough to outrun light and most medium mechs, it allows it to keep up with or keep ahead of the truly lumbering opponents that are out there and easily outrun the majority of all assault mechs. In some models, the engine is heavily upgraded further to an XL variant or even a much larger engine rating. When it comes to its protection, which we talked about briefly earlier, the Marauder carried 11 tons of lamellar armor, offering it greater protection per ton than most conventional armor up until the reintroduction of things like ferrofibrous and endosteel elements. However, over time, as the technology to produce this armor was lost, many Marauders became a patchwork of plates and panels. As their original armor was burned off, it was replaced by less efficient, heavier, and less advanced versions. However, after the clan invasion, we see some extremely up-armored Marauders that can carry as much as 17 tons of armor by making use of the aforementioned clan tech armor upgrades. By the way, to put that into perspective, the Atlas has 19 tons of armor which means that the upgraded Marauders of this era were basically on par with the Assault Mechs of the prior age. It is genuinely an insane step up in power, defensiveness, and basically murder potential. Ensuring everything was as effective as possible, the stock Marauder came with tracking and targeting systems developed by the Dalban Micronics Corporation. Highly effective at tracking targets over long distances and with a sensor resolution to pick up target signatures through minor and moderate obstructions like smoke, flames, tree cover, and in some cases city ruins, if the target happened to have a particularly beefy reactor signature. All in all, the Marauder is a fantastic mech that deserves to be one of the front-running icons of the series, and now I need to step on everybody's toes, or at least the old-timers. The Marauder is arguably one of the most reworked mechs in all of Battletech to go along with the 5 billion different versions of it, or at least the most reworked mech that actually is iconic rather than some random nothing mech like the Clint. There are a billion different versions like we talked about. The original was the Unseen version, however. You can see it here, which a little bit of a... The, you know what? Ignore the contradiction there, it's fine. The midway point for a lot of Battletech art was the Phoenix Project's redesigns, which you can see up on screen, uh, the jury's still out on whether that was a war crime, and the most modern redesigns from recent games such as Mech Warrior Online or Mech Warrior Mercs 5, or the tabletop miniatures from Catalyst Games. The Catalyst Games models are really, really, really good and keep some of the inspiration from the original anime sources, but my heart will always belong to the PGI version. In my opinion, the modern versions are the true, actual Marauder. I'll explain why I think that in a minute, but let me explain why these redesigns happened while for the most part the clans were almost untouched bar some HD textures and restructuring. You see, the clan mechs were almost entirely made by and for Battletech. They are, in many ways, the pioneers of the new style of what Battletech was going to be moving forward. Thus, for the most part, they got it right on the first pass. People will disagree, but there's my first hot take. But for a lot of the Inner Sphere mechs, which were from the super early days when the setting was going to be called Battle Droids, thank god it wasn't, the setting just outright copied designs from other anime IPs through questionable licensing that wasn't quite legal. So with this questionable legality, they basically had to pull all of their designs, leading to the unseen mechs, because they couldn't be shown without infringing on another IP. And in Before Someone Comes to Disagree, yes, the unseen mechs are basically all carbon copies, copy pastas of other properties. The Marauder is actually from the anime Macross, like, the unseen version of it is literally a line-for-line -line copy. But other incredibly iconic mechs like the Battlemaster, the Griffin, the Warhammer, the Rifleman, the Wolverine, they were all similarly from other animes and of Eastern design. Now this, this is really going to piss people off. Like I said, the clans and the re-seen designs that followed are in my opinion what Battletech actually is in terms of art design. Oof. Ooh, I felt a tremor in the force at that last statement as if countless voices suddenly cried out in anger and agony. Be calm, please. 
Actually, you know what? No, don't be calm. I'm here to farm engagement and algorithm fodder. In fact, here's some more motivation to leave an angry comment and improve the engagement rating of my video. Most of the old art was outright bad. Delete. Thanks for completely reworking it. The Phoenix redesigns were the best. I approve of the way PGI has handled MechWarrior Online. Okay, and now with literally every single hot button topic completely dealt with and the entire flood of rage comments, we can move on. But continuing, I also think that the more recent models of the Marauder show the fight between the artistic style of the mech and the technical and lore descriptions of it. A lot of people swear by the giga big gun on the back of the Marauder, even though it is canonically wrong, for the most part. The Marauder's high up weapon mounts are in its side torsos offset from the center. That's in the technical documents of it, by the way. Not mentioned at all and not mounted, like at all, in the center torso behind the head. So the updated PGI design of the Marauder and some of the tabletop models that you can see out there and buy off Etsy or whatever, that is technically the correct version of the Marauder. Ooh, that's gonna make people really angry. But you look at the Catalyst redesign of it, and in a lot of cases, people like it a lot more because it is more iconic. It keeps a lot of that image and look from the original unseen mechs while being unique enough to stand on its own. So there's a little bit of a conflict there in the art direction of the series. Either way though, to throw people a bone because I am nothing if not a magnanimous god, there are so many different versions, remakes, remodels, and variants of the Marauder that you can easily show up to a tabletop game using any version of it you like and simply say it's from insert faction here, or an old model, or it's a new model, or whatever, and hey presto, mostly lore friendly. And that all but concludes this video of the Marauder, a certified classic and one of my all-time favorite mechs. I very much think the modern version is the superior one, but feel free to grab your torches and pitchforks and prove me wrong in the comments. It would also be my favorite iteration if it weren't for the fact that there is a Marauder 2 and 2C. They exist, and they are just cooler. God, an assault mech version of the Marauder, what more could you ask for? Be still, my fluttering heart. And after probably pissing away all the goodwill, Thank you very much to all of Sai's patrons. The support you guys provide is greatly appreciated and goes back into the channel, with a special thanks to the $5 tier patrons. David G, The Original, Augie, Eleven Bravo Crunchy, Terry Higgins, Pedro Munoz, David G, The Other One, Silencer, Vox Apollyon, Phoenix, BT Legend, Electro Boy 11, Logan Maynard, Mickey, David Armand, Cree Dome, Robin Stapit, Fenrir Striker, Tachi Tukane, He's Deb, Pixie, Virtus, and Fabric 445. Jesus Christ, man. I, every time I do this, more people show up. This shit's getting out of control. Insert now there are two of the meme from the prequels. Anyways, that pretty much sums up this video. Thank you all very much for watching till the end. Uh, outros are hard. Goodbye.